I want to have a look at something which often really messes with people's heads when they're dealing with stereochemistry. We need to go back to the most important part about stereochemistry and that is that molecules are enantiomers when they are non-superposable mirror images of each other. And this is a really important definition because in first year certainly when we look at chirality we actually look at it from just one perspective. And, and this is best kind of shown by just looking at one of these molecules that I've got in front of me over here. So, so we've got four carbon atoms. I've, I've left off the hydrogens on these carbon atoms. They'll just be um, unnecessary. We've got four carbon atoms in a zigzag. You can see that there. Um, we've got a group. Oxygen often, uh, is often colored red, so we can think of these being oxygens, but it doesn't matter. They're two of the same uh, group. And we can see that this center over here and this center over here are, are both chiral centers in the way that we could assign them normally. So um, this uh, hydrogen over here um, is pointing up, so we're looking at the whole thing back to front. If we assume that this is the highest priority, we'd have priority one, and this carbon would get priority two, and this carbon over here would be priority three. So we'd be going one, two, three, which is an anti-clockwise uh, direction, which would be S, but we're looking at it back to front. So this is actually an R chiral center over here. And we could do the same one over here. Uh, this is maybe a little easier because we can put that hydrogen going to the back. We're going to have priority one, two, and three. This is also going in an anti-clockwise direction, but of course, because the hydrogen is pointing towards the back, it's um, we're looking at it correctly, so therefore this is an S chiral center. So we can assign very easily chiral centers, R or S, to both of these uh, centers. So we might be tempted to look at a molecule like this and say, well, this is a chiral molecule. Um, but remember, the test for chirality has to do with, is the mirror image non-superposable in itself. So I've got another molecule over here, which is I have tried to make the mirror image. So uh, if we look at this um, on, we still got the zigzag, right? Um, but on this carbon over here, the red group or the oxygen is pointing up and over there it's pointing down. So, so these two centers are mirror images of each other. And we go to this one over here and we see that the proton is, uh, the, the, the oxygen at least is pointing up on this one, uh, but on this one over here, it's pointing down. So they are mirror images of each other. Perhaps uh, we can move them around to see, kind of see how that would look. Uh, there's, uh, wait, something that might uh, show that it's a mirror image, maybe not um, there. Um, right, it's very difficult, this one. All right, maybe that kind of shows that it's a mirror image um, of each other. All right, so you satisfy yourself that those are mirror images. But here's the interesting thing, is that I can take this over here, and it's the same molecule. I haven't done anything different. And those two are completely identical. All right, so this center over here, has the red group coming there, the proton is down, and this group uh, pointing up. And over here, the hydrogen is pointing up, it's pointing up, the red is pointing in this direction, red is pointing to that direction, and the carbon black is pointing in this direction. Yeah. These two molecules are actually superposable on each other. There's another way that I can put them together, like that. You see, these two molecules are completely identical. They can fit on top of each other. Um, so it looks like a mirror image, but actually it is the same molecule. These are identical. And these are what are known as meso compounds. They are the compounds that kind of confuse us because they look chiral when we first look at them, but actually they are not chiral. Uh, and we're going to, I'm going to draw this out on pictures because we can't always use 3D models and we don't need to use 3D models. There's some easy things that we can do to pick up on these molecules called mesomers. Um, but one of the key things to notice about a mesomer, um, you couldn't see it before, 
we only need to look at one of these molecules, is to notice how this molecule is actually symmetrical. If I put my fingers here, you can see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are actually identical to each other. And that's one of the things that we need to look out for for a meso compound, is we're looking for a molecule that has a mirror plane of symmetry going down it. If we see a mirror plane of symmetry, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are mirrors of each other, then the molecule overall will not be chiral. Its mirror image will be superposable on itself and therefore it will not be chiral. So meso compounds, a very typical example of a meso compound would be, it's often these cyclic molecules and they'll have something that looks uh, a bit like this. They'll have a, an OH coming up and an OH coming up over here. And uh, the, the key to look out over this is that we had to do this, um, uh, this, this mirror image. Uh, it's, what do we do? We just take the whole thing and we just flip them uh, round. So now the OHs are going towards the back. So that would be making the mirror image. But what we need to realize, of course, is that, that this one with the OH is pointing down, kind of like I can point my fingers down, and if I just take this and I just flip it round like that, the OH is going to point up, which is what this is over here. So I've made the mirror, but the mirror image fits over the original molecule, and therefore these are not enantiomers. The key to this whole thing is to recognize that there is a mirror plane. Um, it's, it's not an easy one for me to draw, but there's something going through the middle of the molecule over here where the left and right hand half are identical to each other. Now the example that I first showed you was actually one of the more tricky ones um, because it's not that obvious. Um, this is the molecule that I showed you before. It was a butane and it had as an example, an oxygen going up over there and an oxygen going down over there. Now, if you look at something like that, um, you'll be completely forgiven for not realizing that this actually has a mirror plane. There is a mirror plane over here, um, but it's not obvious. Uh, and what I want to do is just quickly give you a suggestion on how you can quickly figure out that there is actually a mirror plane uh, between the two. Um, we can redraw this, and this would be the difficult way. This is not the quick way at all. We could redraw this, and redrawing often introduces problems where you can easily make a mistake. So what I'm doing is I'm going to keep this uh, OH exactly the same. Uh, but this bond, I've, I've spun around this bond over here, so I've put this methyl group into the plane over there. It actually means that this OH is going to come out. Now, I am almost convinced that um, many of you would not have been able to go from there to there um, without using a 3D model. And that's absolutely fine and very normal. Um, and until you get used to working with things in 3D, it can be very difficult to translate from one thing to the next. Once we get here, it should be very obvious, of course, that there is a mirror plane going down this uh, molecule and the left and right hand half are identical. So how do we figure this out on a molecule like this where uh, it's, um, we can't see it straight away? Uh, the way to do it is to realize that what happens in a mirror is a mirror inverts. Now, notice in this one over here, if we had assigned the chirality to each of these centers over here, this one over here would be one, two, three. So we're going round to the right. It is the R stereocenter. This carbon over here would be priority one, priority two, priority three, one, two, three. It's going in an anti-clockwise direction, so it's the S chiral center. If you have a mesomer, you've got this mirror plane, the chiral centers that are there have to be inverted. So if this is R and this is S, and you've got this kind of symmetry in the molecule, it has to be a mesomer. Have a look at this one. One, two, three. This chiral center is S. One, two, three. Going round in a anti-clockwise fashion, which should be S, but actually we're looking at it back to front, so it is R. So 
we can see there's a symmetry in this molecule in the sense that the left-hand half, if we had to put a mirror plane here, a plane, the left-hand half and the right-hand half do look the same. But we don't see it the same way as this. This is easy. This is easy. This is easy. All right. We can easily see that there's that line that goes through the left and right hand half. Easy there. This is not. But if we assign the chirality to those centers, we can see that it doesn't look like it's a it's a complete mirror. But the fact that this one over here is S and this one is R <clears throat> means that the chiral center has inverted in the mirror, and therefore this has to be a meso compound. It's its mirror image is non-superposable on itself, or, or is, sorry, is superposable on itself. That's one way of doing it. <clears throat> Another way, which uh, is maybe not as hard as this, but is also similar, is to take the mirror image of this. So the mirror image of this one would look like this. So now that OH is going to go down. You see, I'm keeping the zigzag the same. This OH over here goes up, so I've made the mirror image of this over here. And then to realize, as I say, this isn't as easy, but for some of you it might work. Um, if we turn this whole molecule by 180 degrees, so we turn it round in this direction by 180 degrees, it becomes this one. It'll become totally identical. Maybe for some of you that's easy, I'm not sure. Um, but what I've shown you here are three different ways that you could use <clears throat> for difficult examples. A lot of examples for MISO are very easy to see. Something like this. Uh, it, it's, a, it's easy. You can see the molecule is symmetrical. You put a line through, it's a mirror, and you're done. For the harder ones, you have to first recognize that there is a symmetry. There is a left and a right-hand half. It may not look like it is chiral. <clears throat> it may not look like it is chiral. Um, but when you either do the turning around, you can see that it's, uh, it definitely isn't. Um, or you draw the mirror image of it, and the mirror image is the same thing. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Or well, the other way is to recognize that point, that the left and right and half, and check the chiral centers. If they've inverted, it's very definitely a meso compound. Okay. Um, what you do need to be careful of, of course, is I've just shown you this over here. Be very careful. The mirror must be the mirror. The left and the right hand half must be absolutely identical to each other. And that's what we're seeing in here. Don't be confused by molecules that might look very similar to what we've done over here. Um, we've got an OH say going up there and an OH going down like that. Don't look at something like this and think that this is a meso compound. It's not. Um, if we draw that mirror plane there, the left and right hand halves are not identical to each other. All right, if they were identical, the OH would be on this side, but it's on this side over here. They've, they've inverted. And because they've inverted uh, in this mirror in the way that this is, it, this is not a chiral center. Um, another, or a meso, a meso compound is a chiral center. It's not a meso compound. Also, um, you can do the assignment. So this will be one, two, three. This is R over here. This over here <clears throat> is going to be one, two, three, which is also R. So the two chiral centers are the same. It cannot be a meso compound at all. So just be careful about that. Um, I showed you the test for this one because we already did it and see that, saw that it was definitely not chiral. Um, but make sure that you can do it with, uh, that you recognize those as well. All right, this is not easy. Um, this will test your head a little bit. Uh, and when you're looking for, for molecules like that, uh, but with a little bit of practice, it actually becomes easy and it really isn't that difficult to, to define. So I've given you some tips and tricks now to do it. Uh, let's see how you do.